Hello, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is a conversation in jazz, where we are promoting jazz through telling the stories. Today, we are interviewing University of the District of Columbia professor, music program coordinator, as well as the curator of the acclaimed Jazz Research and Resource Center, the Felix E. Grant Archives, Ms. Judith Corey. We ask you to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so we can let you know when we are posting another video or going live. We also ask you to donate to our Cash App in order to support the channel and help us to produce future videos. Our Cash App is dollar sign Jazzology 101. That's dollar sign Jazzology 101. Enjoy the video. Hi, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is a conversation in jazz. Today we have a very special person. <laughs> She is a professor of music at the University of the District of Columbia, where she also serves as the music program coordinator. She is the curator of the university's acclaimed jazz research and resource center, the Felix E. Grant Archives. She is known by many of her students as Mother Corey. <laughs> Please welcome Professor Judith Corey. Miss Corey, how you doing? I'm fine, Antonio. <laughs> I'm honored to be here. Oh, I'm, it's my honor to have you here, you know. Um, <laughs> You know, um, in in jazz, we have so many, uh, so many t different types of people that make this thing go. Mm -hmm. You know, we had, of course, you had the performers, then you had the people. You know, you had the presenters, you had the educators, and you and you have people behind the scenes that you don't always see up mm -hmm. front. And you you one of those kind of people that do so much behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and people don't always get to know mm -hmm. or see you. So today we're going to get to know a little bit about you. Okay. Is that cool? Okay. <laughs> All right. First, I want to publicly say thank you um, for not only your service to the to students at UDC and in, and in the metropolitan area, but you helped me to get into UDC mm -hmm. and where I got my second bachelor's degree mm -hmm. in music education. The one that made your money, right? Exactly. <laughs> and I've been in the game for almost 25 years. So, so I want to publicly say thank you. <laughs> you were welcome when I saw you walk in. Of course, I knew you from uh, Howard University on the from the big band festivals. So yeah, we're going to go into yeah. that. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, in my research, I did not know you were my home girl. You're from Philly. That's right. You were born and raised in Philadelphia. Born and raised in Philadelphia. I did yeah. not know that. Mm -hmm. Really, what part of Philly are you from? Uh, East Allegheny Avenue. Oh, what? Wow. Yeah, Port that, Richmond. Yeah. Port wow. Richmond. Yeah, my father was a, a doctor. That's where his office was. And uh -huh. I come from a really big family. And that's really? where we, yeah. yeah. So you still have family in Philly? Oh, yeah. Most of them are in Philly. I have one sister in, in uh, Toronto, but the rest are all in that Philadelphia area. Wow. Mm -hmm. Dang. You yeah, a Philly so, girl. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like coming up in Philly, Philly. Um, during your time? Yeah, Philadelphia was... Um, well, first of all, I come from a really big family. I have seven sisters and two brothers. Wow. So, you know, coming... What was that like? Well, you know, <laughs> coming, you have all different kinds of personalities. It gives yeah. you a, a way of dealing with life. Yeah. Was it fun? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Really? I was second oldest, so it's, you know, from the... Okay. And I have a, they're great. You know, they're all still, still around. We're all in touch. You know, I... Beautiful. Used to get up there a little bit more often until all this other stuff happened. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Philly was great for me coming up. I mm -hmm. mean, just a, it's a musical town, mm -hmm. has a lot of history, mm -hmm. and that, you know, so, yeah, I, I, I love my hometown. Yeah. Do you go back? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I go back, but not, not in the last, uh, yeah, not in yeah, the last year, yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah, normally, yeah, yeah, at least every month, you know. I did I not know you were from Philly mm -hmm. in all these years, mm -hmm. and it's been a long, I've known you over maybe 30 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm. Well, we had a, you know, I was lucky growing up, we had a, uh, you know, musically, it was a, a great environment. I, I was, uh, from the time I was very young, you know, mm -hmm. had lessons. Wow. I went to Catholic school where they had... Yeah. You know what? I went to Catholic school, too. Oh, my God, another one. <laughs> I went to St. Ignatius. <laughs> Saint, I was at uh, Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I went to St. Ignatius. Actually, I went to Our Mother of Sorrows mm -hmm. 
And then I went to St. Ignatius, mm -hmm. all the way up to eighth grade. Yeah. So I'm a Catholic school yeah. kid too. As well, well, we were we were lucky. We had, uh, of course, lessons there, but uh, it was an opportunity for for us and my whole family really to. Uh, I got so much experience there because the you know how the nuns were, yeah, right? Yeah. We had nuns, <laughs> yeah. right? And the nun we had was was just amazing. That's where I got. You know, we we played for the choir. We had to play yeah. for all the church things. You know, right. you had to, you know, a lot of experience in in. Uh, Sight reading, you know, you, you're always put on the spot. Yeah. yeah you know. So I was going to ask you, do you come from a musical family? They loved it, but no, they, they made sure that we studied. None of them were formally trained. My father was a physician. My mother was a nurse. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So you, what instrument did you start off with? Piano and, and uh, organ, but piano is my main instrument. You play organ? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> church, you know, played organ for the church mainly. Okay. So did you did you study formally? Oh yeah, yeah. I've had lessons from when I was about you know six. Wow. Yeah. That's something. And then got um, a music scholarship to high school. So why did you choose the piano? The piano is you know yeah. is, is everything's right there for you. <laughs> Plus that's traditionally what they taught. I uh -huh. had I had one brother that studied trumpet, but you know for the most part in the schools that was the instrument that you. So you studied you in school. Mm -hmm. That's what you learned. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. And when you know want to you know. And piano was your life. first instrument? Yeah. Wow. So are you familiar with the settlement music school? Yes. yes. Did you did you attend? No. no. Okay. Yeah, I, I went to settlement um, in, in South Philly. Mm hmm Yeah, so yeah, that's 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 and you play classical piano? Yeah. Until yeah. I got to UDC. <laughs> really? <laughs> so so when did you get into jazz? Because I you know Well when I after uh when I moved down here, I went to I went to high school and college and, and college in, in Philadelphia. I was a, always a music major. In college, I was a double major for two years. I was in pre med and in music. And then after a while, you realize like music had been my life. You know, yeah. that's all you did. I you know playing all through my, uh, uh, you know, through, you know through high school and college, everything was. But music. coming up, you you weren't really listening to jazz anything. Not. What I was more interested in in high school and in college with the blues. I'd had, you know, we oh, had, wow. oh, yeah, yeah. we would have, uh, I had a good friend, Jerry Ricks, a guitarist who was, uh, uh, he brought people like Mississippi John Hurt, you yeah. know, I would go to the second fret, that was on 19th and Sansom. And um, they would have like Brownie McGee, Sonny Terry, you know, all of the, I would get records like Helen Wolf, Muddy wow. Waters. That's how I, <laughs> I okay, sort of that, grew up and through connect. that, yeah. you know, through that. But of course, Jerry was a, he was a marvelous guitarist and he would uh, go through like the West Montgomery and then I sort of was introduced to wow. a lot of those. My parents had like the big band recordings, things like that, okay. that we would listen to, but uh, it was mainly a classical, yeah. classical background, except, you know, for this, uh, my fascination with the blues, just loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so coming up, did you perform regularly around Philly or did you do like... Most of the stuff in the, you know, within the schools, we had to play for, like in high school, I had to play for all of the, you know, the, yeah. the musicals, the, you know, that type of thing. I taught at a, uh, at a uh, Spanish center, the Casa del Carmen. I did that on Saturdays. And then I also t studied a little bit of guitar, you know, on my own. But, you know, for the most part, you know, wow. playing, playing yeah. there, not, the, the, <laughs> most of the gigs, most of the gigs were either accompanying, you know, accompanying yeah. vocalists yeah. or church. Yeah. So when did you know that I wanted to pursue music, like, I mean, what age were you say this is what I wanted well, to do? Well, that's, you know, when you grow up, do it. That's all you did. When we were in, when I, even in, in grade school, you know how Catholic school was one uh -huh. through eight. You got called out all the time. That's all you did was music. Yeah. You know, the nuns would get mad because the music, you know, would call for you and say, you know, you know come here. And, yeah. And, yeah. and you'd have to prepare for all of the, uh, she was one for performances, uh -huh. all of the, you know, the church yeah. liturgies yeah. and all our musicals. So you would, you know, and all through high school, it was the same thing. All yeah. through college, the same thing. Mm -hmm. When I decided to, to uh, as I said, I was a double major in college because mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a doctor like my father. Really? And um, but after I was a chemistry and music major, but you know after the two years of that, you know, yeah. I, I, you realize what do you want to do for the rest your of your life, yeah, yeah. right? Gotcha. And uh, I decided to uh, you know go full in, you know into the music, and then I got a scholarship to come down to Catholic University for where I did my graduate work, which is what brought wow. me here. So, what background is your your parents like? Where are they from? My father is uh, uh, from Lebanese. Okay. Lebanese background, his okay. family, and uh, my mother's Italian. Oh wow. Yeah. So, so pure Mediterranean. A, that's a rich tradition. Yeah. Rich tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So after high school, you went to college in Philly. In Philly. And what was the name? Of uh, Chestnut Hill College. 
Really? What was your major there? That was chemistry and uh, music. Okay. Yeah. And then, wow. and then I, after my sophomore year, I just went totally into What did you music. like about chemistry? Well, I was a pre-med major, and the choice was either chemistry or biology, and I always liked chemistry. Okay. Mm -hmm. But music took over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were still doing it all the time, you know, and you realize, wait, I've been doing this my whole life. You yeah. know, what, what, you know. So I read that 19, uh, okay, you came to, to Catholic. Mm -hmm. what, what year was that? In, in 1969. Oh, that was the year I was born. <laughs> I'm not trying. <laughs> That's <laughs> I go through that all the time, you know. When when you when you say that, I have you know some kids that were born in like 1985, and they look at you yeah. like, you know, damn, you're old. So, so you came to uh, to the D.C. area to mm -hmm. go to uh, Catholic Catholic University. Okay. Yeah. So why did you choose Catholic? Because of the of your Catholic background. Got a scholarship. I either was going to go to Temple University if I stayed in the city, or Catholic University. Okay. Which they had a great music program. And they still do. You know, so when you got program. to DC, was this, was this your first time in DC? Except for you know school trips. You know when school trips, yeah. and you always come yeah. down to see everything. Yeah, I lived uh, for the first year. I lived in Northeast, close to the university, right on yep. uh, 12th Street. Yep. And, and what was DC like at the time? That well, most of your life, my life at that was, point, centered that, around the you know the university and what was going on. And they had, as I said, it was a, a great music school. That was the end of the uh, uh -huh. you know the Vietnam War. So you had a lot of the Really great musicians were in town. They, you know, they yeah, were drafted. Yeah, they were drafted yeah. into all those army bands, and they, and while they were here, they they decided, okay, I'll go ahead and get my graduate degree at Catholic. So the Catholic had an, an extraordinary orchestra at that time, and, and extraordinary wow. musicians that were there yeah. just just because of that Vietnam yeah. draft. Wow! And they had a fabulous uh, piano department. Okay. Now, in in 1972. You joined the faculty at Federal City College. That's right. Which became UDC. Mm -hmm. How'd you get that gig? <laughs> well, you're going to laugh when you hear this. I had always, I majored in, in graduate school. I mean, piano was my love, and I loved to do a lot of accompanying, but it, back then they didn't have degrees in accompanying. Okay. Plus, my my whole whole thing was not just on classical music, and I didn't want to to spend all my time on a, on a performance degree. Mm -hmm. I was always really good at music theory. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as the mm -hmm. background, I had ex you know, an excellent background in that, so I decided to, to go into the, uh, uh, the music theory program. At, at that time, too, Catholic University had the first electronic music studio. You know, oh, that wow. Was, it, that yeah. was the first wow. in the area. So I worked there. I also did all the recordings for the recitals. So I got called, uh, that it, it was a summer, and I, I was cocktail waitressing. <laughs> really? so, so, you know, yeah. I used to waitress yeah. in the summers, yeah. you know, make, make, make money. I was cocktail waitressing, and I, I, someone called me to the phone. It was the dean of the of the uh, school, of, and they said there's uh, an opening for a theory instructor at the Federal wow. City College okay. because the, one of the faculty members was going on sabbatical, and was I interested? So I put my tray down, and, <laughs> and then, yeah, wow, that's cool. So that's uh, that's that's how and I initially did, did came to Did you have your Federal masters City. by then? I had I had finished all my coursework actually okay, for so a doctorate, it, it but just, I didn't I hadn't done the dissertation yet. Okay, so it lined kind of lined. Mm -hmm. Wow, that that that's something. Yeah. So they had a they had a music program at uh, at the federal Federal City College. Uh, it, well, the music at 1968, the first person uh, Hildred Roach was one of the leading, you know experts in, in the history of African-American music. She's really the one who started the music program. She brought Bobby Felder and uh, uh, Dr. William Moore. They were both from Fisk University. Oh, there. wow. Uh, and later on, Art Dawkins joined the faculty. So yeah. we oh, had, it, it, okay. was, it was one of the, uh, in fact, Art Dawkins said this in one of our jazz forums. It was one of the, we, that program there was one of the first to incorporate um, African American music into the curriculum, not oh, just wow. as a, an extra activity. All of our classes, I remember uh, um, Art Dawkins saying it was the first time he was able to teach, you yeah. know, jazz ensemble for credit. Wow. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. So, so they brought jazz, a jazz element. It was part to the of the. It was part of the curriculum. Our ensembles. We had a gospel gospel ensemble, jazz really? ensemble, in addition to all of the, what would be traditional. So we had the, tr you know, the traditional curriculum there. The first degree that they offered was a uh, Bachelor of Music and Music Education. The jazz studies and the gospel studies okay, degree didn't come until later in 1984 when okay. it had merged yeah. already. Okay. But Federal City was, you know, they wow. had, they, it, it was a amazing place. A it was an amazing talent. time. Yeah. 
a lot of, wow. we had, as I said, people coming back from the, uh, from Vietnam, coming mm -hmm. back to school. We had, it wasn't a traditional student yeah. population. Mm -hmm. You know, you had a, a, a variety of people out of high school, people coming back, professional musicians who wanted to hone their craft. So it was a variety. The first student, actually the first student I met when I came in, um, I don't know if you remember, uh, well, well, Davey Arborough, friend Davey yep. Arborough yeah. was there. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. That's something. Mm -hmm. And so now, you're in D.C. Mm -hmm. You say that's where you got to start getting really into jazz. Mm -hmm. Was it through this going through this program? And well, yeah. They, well, first of all, being there, I always loved. I loved the music. I mm -hmm. just didn't. You know, there wasn't. You know, yeah. a way to to really express it as a yeah. you know playing. Um, I remember. You know, we had like when when uh, Pearl Williams Jones was there. She was mm -hmm. the gospel person. I remember when she brought Horace Silver. Really? You know, to the, yeah, wow. Horace Silver was there with uh, um, Michael Brecker. Was really? playing the thing, yeah. We had a, and then when when uh, Dawkins moved over to Howard, when he was offered that position, Bobby Felder brought Calvin Jones in, and that just, you know. Oh wow! So, I was going to ask about uh, Mr. Jones. So he came in when it was still federal. The the year, yeah, it changed the year after he came in. He came in in 1996, and that was sort of a transition period. 1996. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought he he wasn't there before 96. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. You I'm mean 86, right? I mean, I mean. Um, 70, 1976. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. I was going to say 76. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, 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 so, so, wow. Okay. Yeah, 1976 is when you. he came in. And, and that just, uh, he's, he was just, just a marvelous teacher. He had a way of, of presenting the music. And, yeah, and you know, the way, the way, I think jazz musicians traditionally learned the music, yeah. but he was able to adapt it to an academic situation. Gotcha, you know? gotcha. Yeah, he was coming from Memphis, right? right. He brought that Memphis thing to mm -hmm. him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what year did uh, Federal City College transition into UDC you, or the University? It was of the, the merger. It really, the, it started in 1996 with DC Teachers College and, and Federal 1976? City. 1976? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got Jesus. you. <laughs> you got me, you got me. 1976 and then by uh, 1977, nine, oh Lord, 19, what am I saying? 77. Okay. It, it, you know, it, okay. it merged with WTI, DC Teachers College, and Federal City to become the University of the District of okay. Columbia. Great. But as far as the music program, the leadership of Federal City still kept. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So was is there a particular reason why all these institutions merged? Was I mean, you well, know? you had there were different different emphasis. I mean, DC Teachers College was basically, you know. Mm -hmm. Teachers College, WTI was more of the technical institute, okay. and uh, uh, Federal City College was a, uh, you know, really arts and sciences. That was the oh, that was okay. the emphasis there. So it was a way of, of you know cutting down on administration, you know, merging the things. There were of mm. course there have been you know lots of problems that resulted too with you yeah. know that had to be yeah, ironed out, and we're still ironing yeah, them out. Yeah, you I know. know. That's, that's but it's a, yeah. a you know an urban land grant HBCU yeah. university. And now was. That building where UDC is now, mm -hmm. was that, did, did, did you merge into, was you, were you always working out of that? No, particular? no, we had, uh, Federal City was, was at different spots all downtown. We were okay. at 916 G Street, right across from the uh, Martin Luther King Library. Oh, wow, okay. And that's where it's, uh, uh, the art program, all of the, you know, communications, art, mm -hmm. theater, were all in that, you know, in that, uh, that area. That, the campus that we are in now, where the main campus is mm -hmm. on Van Ness, was really uh, WTI, was Washington Technical Institute, okay. was developed there. Okay. DC Teachers was up, you know, around Howard, where mm -hmm. the minor building, mm -hmm. yep. all of that. Yep. So that that's mm -hmm. where there, and of course now it's expanded, you know, with the with the other. But when when um, when when Jones came there, mm -hmm. he really, I decided that, you know, I went and I would sit in his classes and you know <laughs> start taking lessons, you know, and he would yeah. write out things and, and you know. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. Now. Well, you, you became the music coordinator. Mm -hmm. that, was was that was much later. That was much later? Yeah. Okay. At that time, you, when, you, when you merged and became UDC, you were still teaching? I was teaching music theory, ear training, piano. They okay. were the main. You gotcha. Know. Okay. So, and so how did the, we, we're talking jazz. Mm -hmm. So, you started the jazz program at Federal. And you Federal, that? Yeah, the the, uh, the the classes were there, but it wasn't a it a wasn't degree, a degree. No, we had the Bachelor of Music Education, okay. but the the degree was established in 1984. 
that for, okay. for gospel music studies and for jazz studies. Oh, wow. And Jones, of course, was head of the gospel, I mean, the jazz program, and Pearl Williams Jones was head of the uh, gospel studies, which was the first gospel uh -huh. studies program in the, in the nation. Wow. Yeah. So I remember when I got to UDC, I think I, I mean, when I got to U DC, mm -hmm. and I was at Howard, but I, would, I, I remember coming to UDC. Actually, I came to see a concert. I think it was Sun Ra. Do you remember the concert uh -huh. with Sun Ra uh -huh. that he played? Was he? It was eighty seven or eighty eight, but I remember he performed at UDC. Yeah, at UDC. Uh -huh. um, and but also remember there was a radio station called WDCU, WDCU Jazz ninety. Now, yeah. how did that station come about? That that was. I remember going, I think the first, it was from 1982, I think, until they, I think that was the, the you know, mm -hmm. the dates until there. What had happened was Georgetown, uh, Georgetown Station that they had, they were running into problems with the students and what they were doing. They, they mm -hmm. I think the administration decided to let it go. And they sold it to the university for a dollar. <laughs> for a dollar? Mm -hmm. Wow. So it, it was, uh, and it, it became, I mean, you remember yeah. you know, WDCU was, uh, was the heart and soul of jazz in the city. I mean, yeah. WPFW, of course, was yeah. there, but, you know, DCU yeah. was a strictly a jazz station. Yeah. And it had a lot of community emphasis. You had, you know, Ernest White with his show, you yeah. know, Crosstalk, yeah. uh, all of the, um, you know, it was just a, a, a tremendous asset to the not only the university, but the city. And, of course, as the jazz studies program, we were really able to benefit from yeah. it. Yeah. That was uh, all of the artists they would bring to I campus. Think Gwen Redden, mm -hmm. Gwen Redden, Gwen was, and, and uh, uh, Edith Smith was the uh, general manager. Uh, Candy Shannon was yeah, there. Candy Fauné, Fauné was one of the first. Whitmore, Whit yeah. Uh, Felix wow. Grant. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're gonna talk about mm -hmm. Felix. Oh wow. That Whitmore a, John, yeah. Yeah. It was a tragedy when the uh, that yeah. was during the control board when all of that happened when they had to sell it. Yeah. Now what year? I remember. Um. I remember when the station went off the air. Mm -hmm. I think they were playing some Miles Davis. Miles Davis I, I and Fonay. Was it they, Miles Stones? Yep. I think, and I, I, it was right, and George Coleman was solo, and, and I heard it just fade. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, how did that happen? Yeah. Well, that's a, that's I a, mean, I don't want yeah. to, you ain't got to. go, yeah. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but. Yeah, as I said, it was during the control board okay, period. Okay, DC had a control board The control at board time. during that time. Marion Barry was, uh, was mayor, and Marion mm -hmm. Barry actually did a lot for the city and for the university. Mm -hmm. But it was a there was a deficit in the city, and you know the 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 university was treated as another agency in terms of making it up. And the I guess they thought the only asset that they had that could bring in money, you know, and of course it was sold to C-SPAN, you know, for I don't know how many. It was a it was a bad bad decision. It was a shameful decision, yeah, really. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and it and it really affected what was what was um, not funny about it was that people thought. We we had worked so closely with them that when they sold sold, sold the station, they thought that the jazz program was gone as well. You oh know. wow! That's, that's uh, you know, so it it uh, that's how you know how it affected just the you know what what people thought. And what year was that? That was in nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, we wow. went through a lot of uh, you know being part of the um, uh, you know the city, which is under the federal government. So you can imagine the amount yeah. of politics that are involved. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's always had it. We had, uh, there are always reduction in forces. I remember going back to 1987. That was the mm -hmm. first year of the, the yeah. Big Band Festival. Yeah. Um, they had a reduction in force then, where mm -hmm. if they had gone by seniority, they would have knocked out the gospel and the jazz studies program. Wow. But the, the, the students, the students, you yeah. know, they demonstrated. Yeah. They had yeah. this, Katia Stitt was there, Tracy wow. Cutler, my yeah. friend Vesper Osborne. Uh, you know, demonstrated for it, and uh, I'll never forget Richard Harrington that the, the uh, Washington Post interviewed uh, Calvin, and you know, talking yeah. about the the blues, at, and it really yeah. made an impact. And wow. they retained those faculty, you know, those beautiful, faculty that beautiful. were involved with that. But that yeah. was the that was the first year. And I, th this was the irony of it, right? That was the first year of the Big Band Festival, mm -hmm. 1987, yeah, and it was like that. a great yeah. success. And then right after that, we got our riff notices. <laughs> wow! <laughs> but they were rescinded, you know. Yeah, yeah. And you know, um, it shows you the power of the people. See, yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> you know, what's deep about that? Just that time period when mm -hmm. when we lost the state, there were stations being cut around. It seemed like around the country. I mean, it seemed like people they were on the they were cutting jazz folks mm -hmm. off of uh, labels. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it was a tack on jazz. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
we lost it uh, shortly there after some years after uh, the IJE, mm-hmm. and it, it seemed like it was just jazz was fighting saying. against you know these forces, and it, it was it was you know because there was a when I when I came when I was coming through high school and to college, there was like this resurgence mm-hmm. in jazz. Mm-hmm. You know, Mo Better Blues. You know, you know all these young guys were into the music. You know, and it was like a you know. And and the funny thing is, I was at Howard, you know. I, I remember P Diddy as a student mm-hmm. at Howard, but I wanted to do jazz. Mm-hmm. So and I grew up in the hip hop yep. generation. So I saw hip hop actually grow. Like mm-hmm. I we used to do the house party, but I was compelled to do jazz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, all the cat, many of the cats. That were doing the hip hop and R&B, they all boys the men. I went to school boys the yeah. men. Quest Love, mm-hmm. you know all these cats. Uh, uh, it was a cat named Mark Batson. Mm-hmm. Mark Batson is doing working with Jay Z and producing all these. They all went into the into the hip hop and they making a lot of money. <laughs> I, I, and you I, stayed, you stayed with them. Yeah, I stayed with the well, music. I'm glad um, you did. I'm, yeah, well, you know, I look back and I said, well, maybe, maybe I should. <laughs> no, but it, I, no, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and so. Uh, we had what's what's funny about that too. Radio in general, in terms of of uh, I remember now this goes way you know way before that, but how there was a, a shift in music being played and going into talk radio and yeah. and, and, and it, you know the um, Felix Grant is a great example. Yeah, yeah. You let's know, talk for, about Felix, Felix Grant. They had uh, and and now how he, he, he came. was on he was the radio personality, right? Right. He was on. Uh, if, if you were a certain age, you knew Felix Grant because he. We started out at WWDC, but his main, uh, where he was for the longest period of time, was on WMAL. Okay. And uh, you'd hear him on the. You know, the taxi drivers would have him on. I remember Calvin saying, going to gigs and stuff, listening to. Yeah. You know, listening to Felix yeah. Grant, and when he was on, he had a great, uh, a great appreciation for the music and the musicians. Uh, he was. He had an international. Uh, I mean, he introduced Boston. You know, the Brazilian yeah. music to yeah. the. Uh, you know, to the to really this area. Also Jamaican. You right. know, the reggae. Okay. Um, he also had a great love and fascination for Duke Ellington, and that's oh. really how how it. You know, really? the big band festival came about, and wow. also um, him coming to WDCU. Wow. Um, so in 1987, there was a committee to form this. Uh, it was a week of celebration of Duke Ellington, and it was uh, at that the, on the committee. Bobby Felder was on it. Edith mm-hmm. Smith from our radio mm-hmm. station. A lot of people from around mm-hmm. the city. But uh, uh, Felix is one of the uh, the co chairs. So he, uh, Bobby Felder, brought the idea up of about a big band festival with Howard University, UDC, and the University of Maryland. Yeah. And that turned out to be one of the great successes yeah. of the week. And, and it, up until this year, you know, yeah. Yeah. we we've been doing it yes. every year. So let's talk about the festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called the the uh, Calvin Jones mm-hmm. big, uh, festival now. Yeah, big, big band, band jazz festival. festival yeah. yeah, it was called. It was started out as the University Big mm-hmm. Band Jazz Festival. When he passed in two thousand four, the board of trustees did a resolution to to change it to the uh, Calvin Jones Big Band Jazz Festival. We had been producing it all those you know that yeah. many years mm-hmm. um, as a as a as a you know a tribute to him. Then the other thing besides that that came out of that was Edith Smith invited. Um, Felix Grant to join this Do His World of Jazz show on WDCU-FM, which brought the connection for Felix Grant wow. with UDC. And once again, Bobby Felder had the idea. Uh, Felix wanted to give a lot of his collection to the university, the music department. And uh, uh, with that, Bobby had uh, decided to be great to establish a you know a jazz archive at the wow. university. So that was the start of the... Uh, the archive. We're going to talk about the archive mm-hmm. a little deeper. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, um, so that was the big band festival, which yeah. you've been on, you know, yeah. many, I've been, many I've been times, a, right? And I've had the honor. What? Well, let me say this: I actually went to all three schools. Mm-hmm. I went. To, I started out, came to go to Howard. Mm-hmm. Then I went to UDC, where I got my second bachelor's degree in music education. I started working on my doctorate at College Park mm-hmm. um, in ethnomusicology. Mm-hmm. I wasn't ready at the time, so I <laughs> only, <laughs> only for, for a year. <laughs> but I, I had. I'm one of the few players that has has actually played in the big band festival, festival. with both 
uh, with UDC and 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 uh, Howard University, Howard University Ensemble. Yeah. So, and it was always an honor. I had a great time at UDC. Yeah. I really did. That's yeah. why I knew when you walked in there, you know, uh -huh. about the thing. I, yeah. I recognized you right away. Really? Because, you know, I had been more, I, you know, the Big Band Festival, I've pretty yeah. much been dealing with yeah. the production parts. So, yeah, I yeah. yeah, I remember. <laughs> and you, helped me get, you helped me go through the process, and I got in there, got some scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> and I got, to, you know, for two years to sit under the, the great... Uh, 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 Mr. Calvin Jones. Jones and, was and, just a marvelous, wasn't yeah. he? Oh, yeah. beautiful. I, and, the, you know, like, because I didn't know anything. When I came to college, I didn't know nothing about college. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was the first in my family to go to college and, and graduate. So, and like, it was the, the you know, just f for the price to go and and the and 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 type of education you get at UDC. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. I And see, at that time, I could really appreciate college. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes it takes you some years to to mm -hmm. really understand what college but I was a I was a wild kind of cat. But after, you know, when I got to UDC, I understood, oh, <laughs> take advantage right. of, you know, this, you know, I, I had a wonderful time. Yeah. That's what Jones would always look at the people he had and wrote things. Remember when he wrote the uh, that that uh, what was it a concerto or a sonata yeah, for yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, and Jamal? And yeah, then, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I had a wonderful time, and he yeah. would and he, and his writing and 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 it was just I you know I would meet the UDC cats at Twins at the mm -hmm. gym, Bruce and 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 all the cats, and and Alan and Alan, all them, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know. And Jamal, Jamal, and we so we all meet at twins, so we all knew each other, mm -hmm. and then and then they did the Dr. King thing on uh on the what's that New Year's every mm -hmm. the, every year the, over at the um, at Howard Clamp, yeah Cramp, in, not Cramp, Clamped in, in the uh, in I, Blackburn yeah and so we so then I got to UDC and Allen and Jamal and Eric Valentine. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Erica Poindexter, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know Rachel, mm -hmm. Rachel with that beautiful oh, set. Oh, <laughs> Rachel, Rachel, Rachel too with the archives. The archives wouldn't be what it is today without Re Rachel. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna talk yeah. about the archives. Okay, yeah. wow. But it was a beautiful experience. Now, I, I wanted to ask you. You done seen so many wonderful musicians mm -hmm. come through UDC, and you see them out there. They're doing their thing and they're performing. Mm -hmm. How do you? How does that make you feel? Oh. You know, they're 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 like family. Yeah. You know, it's like family, yeah. and all of them. You know, it's it's we keep in touch all the time. You know, it's it's you know you it's something that you you know I treasure. I yeah. treasure really, yeah. and I'm so proud. You know, when yeah. you see the ones that went on as teachers, the ones that are performing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's um, it, what's a testament to what to yeah. what yeah what you, you know, do yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, now how do people you know how do people get to know about I know I know the radio's not mm -hmm. there, but how do you how do you get the word out about the university? Yeah, well, the uh, of course now the you know the radio station's not there, but we have uh, we have wonderful connections with WPFW because a lot of mm -hmm. our announcers mm -hmm. went 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 there. But also with the uh, you know the rise of the internet and, okay. and you know all of our uh, the outreach that we do. You know mm -hmm. we have the archives has been one. You know the, the, a lot of the productions at the Jazz Studies Program mm -hmm. and the archives, mm -hmm. uh, you know, produce you know our Jazz Live series, all of yeah. that. Um, and you have UDC TV, right? Mm -hmm. Now UDC TV. We is, work closely with them as as well. With uh, Ed Jones as the uh, general manager and my my wonderful friend Cheryl Hawkins, who works very closely with our Jazz Program. You know, wow, they record a lot. Yeah. Wow. So. You said something. About, what is Jazz Alive? Jazz Alive was uh, uh, it really came about after after uh, Jones passed mm -hmm. in 2004, which was very mm -hmm. sudden. I remember um, we had a, a a small ensemble concert that we you know on Tuesday we usually have you know the uh, and and Jones called and said he was going in the hospital and you know Alan for Alan Allen at that point was was uh, uh, after he graduated was uh, an adjunct professor. Okay. You know, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Jones kind of took him under his wing, and mm -hmm. it, yeah, with the ranging and, mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing. Okay. He be, yeah. yeah. So he uh, uh, or he called and said he was going in the hospital, and then you know for for Alan to take over the performance that day, and then the next thing we know, I got a call that Thursday that he had you know passed. had wow. well he hadn't passed yet, but he had uh, you know they he was in a coma. Wow. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, it was really sudden. And then, of course, he passed the, you know, the next weekend. Okay. So it was like, 
after that, you know, I think everybody assumed that that was it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Jones is gone and that. But what was amazing is, you know, when you came into that and you still heard that we kept, you know, that, that Wednesday, yeah. you know, Alan yeah. was in there with the, with the jazz ensemble rehearsing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he, they played at the, at the memorial service mm -hmm. for him. So, wow. it, yeah. you know, without missing a beat. And that's wow. the yeah. jazz alive. Yeah. You know, he created, that's what he wanted to do was yeah. create, uh, you know, people that to carry the art form on. Yeah. That was always what his, his uh, you yeah. know, Jones's goal was. Yeah. So was jazz alive a series of, of concerts? Well, it became that, that, you know, we got the thing and then the Jazz Alive, which was produced by the Jazz Studies Program in the Felix Grand Jazz Archives. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. I was reading that it, it kind of culminated into the... The Big Band. The Big Band Festival. Festival. Well, that, it's a series of events throughout the year. And of course, it, it you know, it expands. Now, we, you know, we, we've always participated in the DC Jazz Festival. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have our own series and then, of course, what we, we do with that. Yeah. So we have the, the Jazz Forum. Uh, our regular, regularly yeah. scheduled, also guests. You've been a guest yes. on the, uh, yeah, on the, on the, with the interview with yeah, Alan Johnson, yeah, which at the, the forum, right? Yeah, meet the artist meet on the, the bandstand. Yeah. yeah. And then it was a little space down outside venue that I think I played on one. The amphitheater. The amphitheater. Yeah. 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 So. so we have it's it's ongoing. We've been uh, it's been sort of quiet. You know, most of our things have been you know we, we like people on the outside now. This this past year, we're we're sort of coming up now we we're doing a, you know things are starting up again with mm -hmm. that because it's been adjusting to this you know yeah and so on UDC TV do they mm -hmm. play some of the performance? oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they they play the uh, the uh, the other thing that's that's uh, wonderful about it too is that we're creating our you know our archive the jazz studies program all of all of our things are archived in the Felix yeah. Grant jazz archives wow that's what i've been doing a lot during this yeah. uh, um, so you are the, you are the curator yeah. of the Felix Grant. I'm the curator, yeah. and and the archivist is Reuben Jackson, another person you need to get to know. He's, okay. Reuben's just brilliant. He's been. And I'm honored to have my 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 series of books in the archive. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, that's a, and that's they're a, featured I'm, right when people come in. Yeah, see it right away. beautiful. So what is the archive? Yeah. What, what does what I mean? Just if the people want to know, what, yeah. is it they can come in and they can? Well, it's not. It's uh, most of it's by appointment, and of course now okay. it's 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 uh, we did have public hours before all of this okay. mess started. But it's it's by appointment. We have researchers from all over the world. We have a, a website. Mm -hmm. We have digital collection where some of the you know the the yeah. uh, our, the contents of it are featured. We have it started out with Felix's collection, which okay. had you know of course LPs and CDs, mm -hmm. but uh, archival materials that really document the history of oh, jazz in this area and yeah. and uh, radio for him, and then. Collections started to come in, you know, from people that knew Felix, people that yeah. knew Jones. Wow. And then when they sold WDCU, that whole collection, we, Jones and I went right away to the president's office to make sure. So all of that collection went into not only the uh, uh, the commercially issued recordings, but all of the archival materials, you know, the, the uh, you know, photographs, business mm -hmm. records, all of these things that really document it. And then since then, I, I can't even, you know, we've had, okay, Paul Anthony, another, uh, you know, we have interviews, number one. That was the uh, okay. interviews that Felix did on w, uh, WMAL where you can listen to, you know, Cannibal Adderley. He would wow. interview them when they would come into the thing. Yeah. And you can go on to the website, jazzarchives.org, really? okay. and uh, go to the digital collection and hear these interviews. Wow, beautiful. They have interviews that were done at the, uh, we probably have about like 100 and, I don't know, 50 or 60 interviews wow. that are up beautiful. on the internet. Uh, other, other, uh, uh, like Paul Anthony, I was mentioning him too. He had a he had a gave a collection of LPs and also recordings. Um, John Hassey from the uh, Smithsonian, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gave you know albums. We have uh, Thomas. I'm trying to. Oh, um, this is where the age starts coming in. <laughs> but we have over. I mean, yeah. as far as you know, commercially issued recordings, it's a huge Beautiful. collection. But then the the archival materials that are there that are mm -hmm. just. You know. Is Joe's trombone? I think. Yes. Yeah, his trombone is there. His yeah. family gave the the trombone. Oh, yeah. They presented yeah. it at the uh, the uh, big band festival, and of course, it's it's right there. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And so, and what about Rachel? Rachel. Rachel Hot Elwell. With, Rachel Elwell. Elwell. Uh, I can never remember her last, her last name. name. Rachel. Yeah, Elwell. she was a jazz studies major okay. at the university, but she started working with me. Um, after Bobby Felder retired, the 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 jazz they asked the jazz studies program to sort of take over the. Uh, the the archive in terms of you know the development and, yeah. and overseeing what's going on so you know of course Jones was dealing with the uh, 
performance part of the program, and so I started working with the archives. And in 1995, Rachel, as a student there, became worked with me yeah. in the archives. Now, was she studying library science? No, before, not there. She was a jazz studies major. Yeah. She went when she graduated. She went into library science. Okay. Okay. But she, you know, during that period, and then when she graduated, uh, she was hired as a media technician by the library. Oh, so beautiful. because the 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 archive is really. Um, supported by the the library and also mm -hmm. the uh, College of Arts and Sciences. Mm -hmm. So she's she became the first she was full-time employee. I mm. I was, you know, I'm the music program mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and there, but she you know, really she did a tremendous amount of work and then at the same time she started going to uh, you know, the library school because so much of what she, what this is now is information science, yeah. you know, yeah. and how handling wow. all of these things. Yeah. But she yeah. was just brilliant in what she did in terms of organizing. So she was with us until uh, not only with us at the archive, but she always still stayed and played in the band. You yeah, know? I would say she was our Mar she was our Marshall Roy. Yeah, you know yeah. Her sad. You know, some people just got a sad. Yeah, and it just and that yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we still smile when we hear the things. You know, Alan will say like, "Oh, yeah, yeah. Rachel." Whatever, whatever setup you use, don't change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before Rachel, had Frankie Addison was the lead. And yeah, then Rachel, yeah. You know, that sound, you know, that yeah, real, well, my, you got that sound, too. You got that big sound. But I, was, I was think I was playing tenor. Yeah. Yeah, then, you know, yeah. Um, but yet, no, Rachel got She a, owned that sound. Yeah, she got, yeah, that was, <laughs> you know, um, and it was a pleasant sound. Mm -hmm. It was it was big. And she knew the, the you know, the, the uh, performance pride. She knew yeah, that, you know, yeah, it was she so. knew what to do. <laughs> now, I read that in 2016, uh, the Felix Grant Archives was chosen at, by Howard University, mm -hmm. the Howard University Jazz Ensemble, to receive the prestigious Benny Golson Jazz Master yeah, Award. We were so honored for that. That was wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. That That's was beautiful. yeah. That was uh, um, I would say Irby and of course Dawkins were there. Irby, yeah. by the way, we did him uh, uh, had a jazz forum where he came. It was March second. Was the last live one we had, and he did. It was one of the best ones. He really, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I thought I knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you oh, know yeah, somebody, yeah, right? Because yeah, all those fun. years going by. <laughs> but he did a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. uh, jazz forum. Yeah. The um, yeah, that was the, and we were really honored to wow. you know to be to be yeah. chosen for yeah, that. Beautiful. You know, accept that. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a beautiful. So the. Is there a way for people to support the archive? Oh, of course, you know that. <laughs> how, how, how can people support the archive? Well, we have a. Um, there's there in, in well in terms of collections right now we're sort of at the you know the brim so I'm sort of you know right now that but as far as financially doing that in the and the jazz studies program, uh, the UGC Foundation you're able okay, to so donate to the jazz studies program which. You know, it, okay. it covers the archive and the jazz studies program through the UGC Foundation. Okay, and we're going we're gonna to share that again at the end. Yeah, and it's on <laughs> All right, I have some final questions. Mm -hmm. But before that, anything that I've missed that you want to, sh that, 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 you know, that, because, you know. Well, all the wonderful, you know, I've, I've, I said I can't, a shout out to all of the, the, uh, the students that yeah. have been through there, you know, and there's so many I if can't. If you start even... naming, is you yeah, gonna forget? Yeah, I will eat yeah. somebody. I had, I had to, uh, you know. Now you said Bruce Williams was your baby. Oh, right. and, and fish, you know, the and two fish. of them came oh, together. Yeah, the two, yeah. the two of them came together. Yeah. But we had gone back. Aaron Graves, Tracy Cutler, mm -hmm. you know, Kenny Dickerson, all of them, yeah. you know, the mm -hmm. and and Yusuf Chisholm. The Yusuf Chisholm. Yusuf Chisholm. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, they're doing a Meet the Artist with uh, Yusuf Chisholm this Tuesday. Beautiful, beautiful. With Alan. Yeah. yeah. Um, the the you know DeAndre Schaefer yeah people that came yeah. uh, uh, Reginald Sinche yeah Reginald yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, Douglas Pierce Doug oh Douglas god yeah, Doug, you know all the wonderful I can't you know I'm, I'm I yeah. you know where you, where you know where the names are I had to do a uh, that that article on DC jazz mm -hmm. the uh, stories of jazz music in Washington DC yeah. Yeah, and was they they asked me to do the chapter on yeah. on UDC yeah. so of course I had I well, I had all of them you know all, yeah. <laughs> And they, I had them in the body of the thing. I said, no, that goes in the notes. So, yeah. But all their names are in the notes. Yeah. So Yours, too. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> you. <laughs> Speaking of that, because I was going to ask you that about mm -hmm. that. You uh, you were a contributor to the book, mm -hmm. D.C. Jazz, Stories of Jazz Music in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And that's where you... So your, your chapter was about UDC? It was about, yeah, the, well, actually about the, uh, the, the yeah. 
the, the Washington's Jazz University, as, as, uh, okay. as, as they named it. The editors are uh, Maurice Jackson and Blair Ruppel. And of course, the contributors, like Rusty Hassan, who you had mm -hmm. uh, from one of your conversations. Yeah. Um, and I found out y'all were related in a, in a funny kind of oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, my, cousin, my, cousin, uh, my cousin Paul, his daughter, um, is, is the niece of Rusty, Rusty's yeah, niece, wow. yeah. And yeah. and I, I Ryan I yeah, mentioned that beautiful. Rusty's yeah. wife's father was my grandfather. Yeah. They were good friends, mm -hmm. and my grandfather used to tell me about him mm -hmm. um, when I would go visit him in Philly. So we, that was that was just you know Rusty. He he teaches our the, the jazz history class now. You know at, at UDC. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, it's it's, it's such a small world. <laughs> All the, well, coinc you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what can I say, Alan Johnson, you know, Alan Johnson. Yes, was, I wanted to ask you, how did, did Alan Johnson, did he, to, to, to fill those shoes, uh, he's, he came in and he just, he, he yeah, did, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a different, you know, he, he yeah. there, you know, Jones, but, but, but what, what he has brought to it too, I mean, he's a, he's a, just a, an incredible musician yeah. and person, yeah. you know. And, yeah, and a good, good, good person. And, and we're lucky to have, you know, Steve Novosel, who you had yeah, on. Yeah, Steve's been yeah. with us since, God, 1989. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Tom Teasley's a percussionist. Mm -hmm. DeAndre Schaefer's teaching. Yeah. DeAndre's a marvelous uh, teacher. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. Really, yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah. Besides, you know, practicing, yeah. teaching's a whole other thing, as yeah. you know. Yeah, <laughs> Sure is. <laughs> but Jones, but Jones uh, you know, he created a, a legacy there, and I think yeah. that's, that's, they've been carrying it on beautifully. Yeah. So, so here are my final questions. Mm -hmm. I got, uh, what was it like all those years working with Mr. Jones? I, I mean, you, you, you alluded, I know it was just, mm -hmm. I know the ups and downs, yeah. the, were y'all a team and y'all was able to was fight through it and all yeah. that? Yeah, he, 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 that's why I, I can truthfully say I have been there this many years because I've continued, I'm the, I'm the perpetual student too, yeah. you know, teach. <laughs> uh -huh. I've been able to learn and, you know, and, and meet all of these, you know, wonderful people. Yes. Uh, he taught me so much. I mean, my just being able to, you know, yeah. an opportunity to play. I used to play with the ensembles, you know. And yeah, that, wow. Know, and it gave you a real appreciation of what is involved with this music. Now, did you do the, the notating of all that, all his? Uh, I became his copyist, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I was, but you know what? It's it's funny, but you know, with, with the uh, because I had the uh, what was a, you know the, I used the finale software, uh -huh. so I used to. I remember he, it would be over a vacation, you know, be handing the thing like, oh, here's another one. But what I love to see now, though, are his scores in his hand. Wow. You know, yeah. because the, the the problem with the music notation programs is that they're they all look alike, you know, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But when you see his hand, everything yeah, is there, it's clear, yeah. and it's, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I became, I have all of his, you know, the all, you know, the copyist yeah. firm, and, and that's what I did. I did it outside as well. And what year did he, pay? how long has 2004. he been? 2004. Yeah, wow. Yeah, the time kinda, goes by so fast. Oof. Yeah, it's like, wow. But, yeah, we And missed, I see what we, they, what, what, what his students are doing now. Yeah. You know, and. and yeah, he's, he's touched all of us, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, we all miss him. You know, so the stories. It's what's what's great is when they come back and they start, you know, telling yeah. telling the Jones stories. Yeah, yeah. In this room, and you then know, they pull up and hide. Pull, 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 yeah, you'd, come, you'd walk in the morning and you'd smell like yeah, frying bacon. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that was having having a cereal with, with a fruit cocktail on it. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah and I've stayed with his family has been absolutely wonderful. His uh, daughter, Linda, is at uh, okay. Howard University, and, you know, we're, we're in oh, touch wow. all the time. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, so I wanted, we go, we almost coming to a close, mm -hmm. but I wanted to know, where did you get your spirit and love for service? Because you, <laughs> you have been in the background, but I've seen you and watched you, and you have been, you know, gracious, and, and you supported us musicians and, and students, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's jazz or, you know, you know, and people love you, you know, <laughs> and, and we, you know, they call you Mother Corey. Yeah. So where did that, I'm, was I'm that so, something you... I'm proud of that too. That always yeah. brings, brings tears to my eyes. Yeah. It's from, I, I can't, there's nothing better than to be of, 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 of assistance to someone. It's mm -hmm. something I grew up with. I suspect it goes back to family, yeah. all of that, yeah. you know. Do, does your Catholic background also... Um, well, it's being a human being, and it's yeah, the, that yeah. too. I mean, you know, that's that's part of it to be truly Christian, yeah, right? Love thy yeah, neighbor as yeah. thyself. Because <laughs> I remember going back to, I learned a lot of my values mm -hmm. going back to Catholic school. Things, mm -hmm. 
um, that, you know, you know, that I would learn and, and some of the, the nuns would say and, mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's beautiful. But we, we certainly, you know, appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? And we want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I love you. I love you all. Oh, yes. So I want to share some of these awards that you've received for your many years of service to the <laughs> music community here in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. You got the University of the District of Columbia, Dr. The University of the District of Columbia's Dr. Cleveland Denard Service Award. Mm -hmm. Wow. Which is presented to an individual who has demonstrated a long-term commitment of outstanding service to the university. How did that feel when you got yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> that it's 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 always nice to know that that you know mm -hmm. that that recognition is there but you know it, it's that's you can't if you're going to do something you've got to do it yeah yeah no doubt and and it's right it's beautiful when you get recognized mm -hmm. when they say smell the roses on this side of the bread <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> so you you've uh the accomplishment and leadership award from the college of arts and sciences mm -hmm. sciences Wow. Uh, the university presented you with the Pathmaker Leadership Award. <laughs> they, they love you there. <laughs> um, you were honored with the 24th Annual Mayor's Arts Award for mm -hmm. Excellence in Service to the Arts. Mm -hmm. The Mayor's Award, yeah. That the was Mayor, good. yeah. The Mayor's Arts Award. Beautiful. And you got the Jazz Journalist Association Jazz Hero Award. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get that from? Jazz Journalist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Jazz Journalist Association. Okay, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. And today we're going to give you a Conversations in Jazz Channel Award. Service to Jazz, would you stay right there? We got something <laughs> for you. <coughs> so here oh we go. my gosh. So this is, this is called the Conversations in Jazz Channel. This is my mm -hmm. channel, our channel. <laughs> Presents Service of Jazz Awards to Miss Judith Corey on March 13th, 2021. Oh. This is my hour. Thank you for Thank your service you so to Jazz. Much. Thank and that's you the so very much. first that's the very first, first one. one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to thank you for all that you do for, for the jazz community mm -hmm. and for us as musicians. We appreciate you. We love you. Mm -hmm. And continue to do what you're doing. <laughs> and so with that. Let's say, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. how's the university dealing with the pandemic? It's been, we've been on what we call emergency remote instruction, but you know, we're, we're dealing with it. I go in, you know, I'm still able to go into the archives to do mm -hmm. work there, I and I do you. a lot of the work at home. But, uh, you know, we've been, music is a little bit different from the other, you know, yeah. the mm -hmm. other things, but we've been, we've been, been uh, you know, handling. adjusting, okay. adjusting. I just can't wait to, we can do Get face back. to face, yeah, because yeah. you need that. Uh -huh. You know, well, you know yourself. Performances yeah. are fine, you know that, that but you yeah, need that probably, audience. Yeah, yeah, you need the, the interaction. <laughs> exactly. And our final question is: mm -hmm. How can people learn more about the programs at the University of the District of Columbia? You can mm -hmm. look right in this camera right okay. here. Well, of course, the university's website udc.edu. But if you want to speak to me, uh, I think the easiest one to remember would be jazzalive at udc.edu. And that'll connect you to, you know, to me and also to, uh, uh, you know, what's going on in the music program okay. as well. And also, we talk, you, you said there's a, a you can contribute to, for the uh, archives? Yeah, yeah, for the archives and the jazz studies program through the UDC Foundation. And that is also online. If you just go to the UDC Foundation, hit that note, and it will bring you to the, uh, you know, the support page. Oh, beautiful. And just designate it to jazz studies. <laughs> well, well, it is. So, thank you. I, this has been a great uh, conversation. Antonio, I'm I'm just I'm thrilled to be here. I was I, I told Alan before I came. I said I hope I remember my name. When I get on there. <laughs> no, this is laid back. You know, yeah. see, this is jazz, like mm -hmm. jazz. We make mistakes, whatever. It's all part of the music. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we. I'm so honored to be able to uh, mm -hmm. to be able to interview and learn more about you. Mm -hmm. And and and, and we got our Philly connection. And and yeah, to learn that. Wow, mm -hmm. we you my homegirl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you again. And uh, all the best, you know, and stay safe. And, yeah. you know, hopefully we'll get through this and be on a... And keep you know, jazz alive, And keep huh? jazz alive. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, there it is. You were listening to Professor Judith Corey. Um, and this is 
a conversation in jazz, and we'll see you on the next one.